Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. Um, we begin our worship this day in the name of God who created us, Jesus Christ, who redeems us, and the Holy Spirit who sustains us. Amen. Our first reading for this day is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and hear and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that do not know, that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Amen. And that is the end of our first reading. Our gospel for this weekend is according to St. Matthew chapter 13 verses 13 through 21. Now when Jesus heard that John the Baptist had been beheaded, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces 12 baskets full and those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children the Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. So the title of our message for this day, sisters and brothers, is Come, You Who Hunger, You Who Thirst. And let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. So when I was in seminary, one of my favorite professors was Reverend Dr. Krister Stendhal. And um, I'll never forget, I was taking a class on preaching and worship with him. And he was Lutheran. And so this tall, very thin, older man with this thick Swedish accent and he um, in class he was teaching us about 
Holy Communion and he said, we Christians are a pretty people. And we all, like my fellow classmates and I all looked at each other and we were like, what? And he's like, we Christians are a crunchy people. And we're like, what? And then finally he said, crunchy. We Christians are a crunchy people. And so we understood the word, but we didn't know what he meant by that. And he said, the table, the altar is the center of our faith and what's an altar but a table that feeds people so today we have two passages from uh, one from Isaiah 55 and one from Matthew 13 about people who are hungry and thirsty and God or Jesus God made flesh feeding them it's the famous gospel story of Jesus feeding thousands, 5,000 men, plus women and children. And um, so I, every week as I do these videos, I am the missioner for Church Beyond the Walls. I've been going out into communities and different places in the outdoors, uh, filming my messages. And I tried to think of a place that went, that goes with each of the week's gospels. And so this week I thought, where are thousands of hungry people fed? And then I thought, duh, um, Church Beyond the Walls, which we do every week right here in this place. And that's why I'm sitting here in this busy park where you can see lots of activity going on. Right over here, we usually have our table and it's just a fold up table but we put a white or depending on the season a cloth on it and set up Holy Communion and then after we finish our Eucharistic meal we have an actual meal together and we feed hungry people. So what better place to film my message for this week than right here in this place. And we're not Jesus, we don't feed 5,000 people in one fell swoop, but I was thinking about it and I was thinking we do feed about 100 people a week. And we've been gathering, we gather every single week, rain, shine, snow, you name it, and so that comes out to about 5,000 people a year. And this year is our 10th anniversary. So that's about 50,000 meals we have shared with hungry people. And sort of the motto of Church Beyond the Walls, if you go on our website or our Facebook page and you want to donate to this wonderful ministry, our motto is feeding people physically and spiritually on the streets of Providence. So that is why I'm sitting here in this place. This is our worship space for Church Beyond the Walls. Now I want us to look a little more deeply at today's um, gospel and that same Christer Stendhal and some other professors there at Harvard Divinity, uh, when I took a, another uh, class on New Testament, um, I learned that in the New Testament, every time they speak of the Eucharist or Holy Communion, they follow a, a literary formula. And the formula is this. In Greek, the words say, Jesus took, blessed, broke, gave. That's the Eucharistic formula. To take, to bless, and in Greek, the word to bless is actually Eucharistane, and it means to give thanks. So Jesus took from God, received, blessed or gave thanks and gratitude back to God for what he had taken, what he had received from God, broke it, 
to share it with others and then gave it. And that's the formula, sisters and brothers. And interestingly, this story about the loaves and the fishes follows the Eucharistic formula. So some Bible scholars think that maybe in the beginning, the Eucharist was not just bread and wine, but possibly even bread and fish. <laughs> How would you alter gills like cleaning that up? Anyway, um, so the context for our gospel today is this. Jesus himself is feeling broken. Now, why do I say that? Because Jesus had just heard the news that his beloved um, kind of colleague and friend in ministry in sharing the gospel message and his kinsman, his cousin, if you will, John the Baptist had just been beheaded. That's what came right before today's passage. So Jesus is feeling broken. He's grieving, he's sad. And so we're told at the beginning of this gospel that so Jesus went away to a quiet place to be alone, to be by himself, okay? Um, and he withdrew from there in a boat, it said, to a deserted place by himself. But it says when the crowds heard that, they went around by foot to, um, to hear his teaching, to kind of receive more wisdom, more teaching from him. And so when Jesus gets out of this boat, now here he is grieving, broken, so deeply sad over John the Baptist. And he gets out here, this crowd is waiting for him to receive more from him. And if I were Jesus, which thank goodness I'm not, I would like want to run and hide. But Jesus didn't. In fact, we're told he had compassion on the people and cured them okay so um, and so he cured them he healed them physically but Jesus is all always about feeding and healing people not just physically but also spiritually and that's why Church Beyond the Walls also talks about how we feed people physically but also spiritually so he's teaching them, he's feeding them spiritually, and it, and it grows late. And his disciples come up to him and they say, teacher, rabbi, um, this is a deserted place. Why don't you dismiss the crowd so they can go into nearby towns and get themselves something to eat? And, um, and Jesus says, they don't need to do that. You give them something to eat. Now, I'm gonna venture that Jesus's disciples were also kind of broken <laughs> in their own way, because we're all broken, right? And so, like, they didn't get it. They didn't know what he was talking about. They, they doubted that, that they had anything to share with people. And they said, um, but we have nothing. We have nothing. So they were sort of pessimists, if you will. And then if you notice, they said, we have nothing but a couple fish and some bread. Nothing but. So sisters and brothers, um, I invite you to think about your own life for a while, right at this point in time. And so often when I talk with people and I hear people's struggles, um, and we all have struggles, and I'm, I don't want to ever undermine uh, or underestimate or dismiss the struggles you may be going through. But we often do focus on we have nothing. We have nothing to give others. We have nothing. But Jesus wants us to focus on the but. <laughs> what is it you do have to share? 
we have nothing but a couple fish and these few loaves. Okay? So you too might be feeling hungry. You might be feeling thirsty. You might be feeling empty. You might be feeling like you have nothing to give others. You're exhausted. That's how Jesus was feeling. Um, but like in that beautiful first passage from Isaiah where it says, Come to me, all who thirst. Come, you who have no money. Come, buy, and eat. And Jesus, uh, not Jesus, but God through the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 55 shares this beautiful vision of the, the heavenly banquet, right? This banquet that, with which God feeds our spirits. And Jesus, again today, he says to his disciples, he invites us to all think about, we might feel as though we have nothing, but what do you have to share? Okay? And, and Jesus doesn't just leave us on our own. Okay, so we focus on what we do have as opposed to what we don't have. And then Jesus says, bring that to me. Bring whatever it is you do have, bring it to me. Okay, so that's us following that Eucharistic formula of taking what we do have and giving it to God, giving it to Jesus. And what does Jesus do with it? He blesses it. He gives thanks for it. He gives gratitude for it. So maybe if we can also follow that formula, take what we do have, give thanks for it, ask, bring it to God and ask God, ask Christ to bless it. And then Jesus breaks it. That image of brokenness, um, you know, is, is often today used as a symbol of of sin, of anything that's separating us from God, from others, from the fullness of life God desires for us. We're all broken in different ways. And so how appropriate that Jesus takes this bread which represents his body and breaks it just as his body was broken on the cross. And then from that brokenness, we're able to share. And Jesus shares that those broken pieces of bread with others. And all are fed. All are fed. So today, I invite you to think about the many ways, the many things you've been blessed with, to try to focus not on the negative, what you don't have, we have nothing, right? But to focus on the but. But I do have this. To bring that to God, to take it, take, give thanks, bless, Eucharistine, right? Break it. It's from our own brokenness that we are more able to share with others and that they're more likely to receive. One of my favorite poems, it's a poem, it's also song lyrics by Leonard Cohen from his song Anthem. I was listening to it just the other day. He says, ring the bell that still can ring forget your perfect offering there is a crack in everything that's how the light gets in so sisters and brothers can you take what you do have give thanks for it put yourself out there in all your brokenness and share with others Physically, physical food, if you have it, spiritual food, if you have it. Um, every week here at Church Beyond the Walls, after we have 
Holy Communion together. We quickly clean up and then our Eucharistic table turns into a literal table and we feed each week about a hundred hungry, thirsty people. This day, sisters and brothers, may you take, give thanks, break, share, and bless others by sharing physical and spiritual food. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May God look upon us with blessing and grant us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.